Uh, next, we'll be asking, how can nonprofits create inclusive and effective online collaboration? Something we're all thinking about these days. Nora Alanjan will share IREX's online collaboration guide that equips facilitators with the set of soft skills used to design learning experiences. So today we've had a chance to learn about a lot of great and practical digital tools. With these and other tools in mind, I'll be shifting to share with you IREX's online collaboration guide for collaborators which is a resource focused on the soft skills used to design learning experiences to create enabling and inclusive environments for effective online collaboration. Developed by my colleagues Sega Balachu and Nina Oduro, the guide provides practical tips and diagnostic assessment worksheets on how to identify, select, and employ suitable tools and how to tailor facilitation strategies to conduct effective, inclusive meetings, workshops, learning sessions, and trainings. So with that, let us, let me see my uh, next slide. Great. So let's reflect on the different roles that we have in online collaboration and learning. I'd love to get to know who's in the room and that way you will get to know who has similar interests as you and uh, similar roles or different roles. Um, my uh, direct colleague, Jesus Melendez Vicente, he's senior technical advisor. He's monitoring the chat for those of you who'd like to connect um, during the presentation as well as after. So maybe you're one, a trainer shifting from in-person to online training, or two, interested in digital tools more generally for online training and facilitation, or maybe three, supporting those facilitators and trainers to shift to or improve online delivery. So go ahead and pop one of those in the chat. We'll get it of, of who's around. Um, and with those uh, in mind, whether as facilitators, program designers, trainers, and developers of tools, there's a lot of great choice uh, to make and factors to consider um, in designing learning experiences that make a difference. Um, in those different roles, development and employment of the specific tool um, has been really important to online collaboration at work, but it hasn't been done in a vacuum or in static conditions. Maybe you work in environments or with partners and participants that have been impacted by conflict, or maybe economic conditions have resulted in severely limited access to electricity and internet. You might work on programming uh, that supports journalists uh, or civic activists in closed and closing spaces. All of those things uh, are really important to consider when you think deliberately through the different circumstances of online facilitation. Um, and it's critical as part of the approach to do no more harm and to facilitate the inclusive learning experiences that, that we're really looking for. So we have here, um, as we're adjusting to uh, virtual training, um, the guide itself helps to articulate the different ways that digital tools can support collaboration um, and learning online in order to determine through a deliberative process what's going to be a good fit for the audience and for the purpose that you have in mind. Um, so the categories that we have here, just briefly going through, helping people learn, helping learners connect, uh, helping learners reflect, and then helping facilitators to monitor. Um, so the, the practical tips that the guide includes as well, uh, will focus on design with the audience in mind, um, how not to complicate the process or use too many tools, how to keep in mind issues of access, safety, inclusion, and respect, and then how to design for a variety of participants. And the guide will take the user through how in-person curricula can be adjusted for virtual delivery in a step-by-step -step process through the following day. So here you'll see the start of the diagnostic assessment. So it helps you to select a digital tool to support collaboration. And so the first question uh, addresses is considering your audience. So we have here um, in considering your audience, questions about digital literacy, digital access, digital purpose, profile, and uh, facilitation. It next goes, uh, once you've responded to the different prompts here, you'll be guided to how uh, to incorporate your answers. So let's say audience says digital literacy is moderate or advanced, go to select the uh, tools that support those objectives. Or if it's limited, don't uh, go to select really complex tools because that's not going to help. So it's really that like deliberate step-by-step -step approach that, that acknowledges who the audience is and how to incorporate that. Okay, um, so the tool itself will take you through and then to the last step, of the identifying the function and the purpose, listing the tools, and then completing this worksheet itself to select those tools. Um, so I want to say a warm thank you to TechSoup and all those involved in developing and implementing these super cool tools uh, that the guide highlights.